Hello, welcome to another video brought to you by Elite Educational and Professional Academy. In today's video, we're going to be learning about the specific heat capacity of substances, which is a physical property that most probably, whether you're studying physics, chemistry, or engineering, this is a, this is a term that you would come across, or you will come across at what point in time. A specific heat capacity simply represents the ability of a material to absorb or release heat and how it responds to that. When we're talking about specific heat capacity, various substances have been taken, they've been put into the lab, and they've been subjected to the same source of heat. One kilogram of a substance has been subjected to the same source of heat and we observed what happened. How they responded to the heat by temperature fluctuations. Now, obviously, various materials respond to heat differently. And the after effect, which is the increase or decrease in temperature, would be different with respect to different materials. And this is the basis for the specific heat capacity. So let's jump right into it and explain it with details, along with the units, formulations, and the symbol that you should keep in mind for the specific heat capacity. At this point in time, make sure that you hit like and subscribe to stay tuned with our latest updates. So the definition of the specific heat capacity is the amount of energy needed to increase the temperature of one kilogram, this is the important part, one kilogram of a substance by one degree Celsius or Kelvin, depending on the formula that you're using and the system of units that you are following. So the specific heat capacity is a property of a substance in which it is the amount of energy needed to increase the temperature of one kilogram of a substance by one degree Celsius or Kelvin. And the symbol for specific heat capacity is the letter C. And the unit of measurement would be joules per kilogram Kelvin or joules per kilogram degree Celsius. So the unit would be, the symbol would be C, and the unit of measurement would be joules per kilogram Kelvin or joules per kilogram degree Celsius. Now to put it into perspective, in order to understand it better, let's say we do have one kilogram of iron, and I do have one kilogram of copper. And I subject both of them to the same source of heat. I subject both of them to the same source of heat. Nothing is different. Everything is exactly the same. The same heat source, the same amount of energy I'm giving to both one for the one kilogram of iron and the one kilogram of copper. Everything is exactly the same. The only difference that we have is the material is different. It's a different material. Now, do you think they would respond to heat in the same way. Let's say if I throw in a thermometer, I have a thermometer here, and then another thermometer here. Do you think if I subject them to the same amount of heat for the same period of time, everything's exactly the same. The only difference is I have iron on the left side and copper on the right side. Do you think the reading for the temperature after, let's say, one hour for iron, it would be the same reading as for copper? Of course not. The temperature would be different. Now, the temperature for iron would be different than the temperature for copper. Why? Because the material is different and they respond differently to heat. Iron absorbs heat in a different way than copper absorbs heat and responds to heat. This is the beauty about the specific heat capacity. It helps me quantify and understand how different materials respond to heat such that I'm able to understand and obtain the amount of energy needed in order to increase the temperature by one degree Celsius 
per kilogram of a substance. So, and these values, they are tabulated in which you have different experimental values. You can find them in um, your, the back of your physics or engineering book or your chemistry books as well, where you do have a list of materials, right? You have the materials and you do have the specific heat capacity for different materials. Let's say iron, copper, silver, etc. And all these values have been tabulated for you to refer to. And you can just simply use them as they've been obtained through the experiments in which one kilogram of various substances have been used and they've been subjected to the same source of heat and how they responded to heat have been tabulated. Such that we do have these measured values, the specific heats of various substances for us to use as part of the calculations for heat transfer. So as we have seen, the specific heat capacity is the amount of energy needed to increase the temperature of one kilogram of a substance by one degree Celsius or Kelvin. So if you get a kilogram of any substance, the amount of energy needed in order to increase its temperature by one degree Celsius varies from one substance to the other. And this is the basis for the specific heat capacity, which is the definition, the amount of energy needed to increase the temperature of one kilogram of a substance by one degree Celsius. So this is a physical property that varies from one substance to the other and has been tabulated. And if you have a physics book, chemistry book, or engineering book, most probably it would be within the chapter that you're studying or at the appendix section of your book. You can just simply refer to it. Now, what's the use for this specific property? It's essential. It's essential in the formulation of the heat transfer. As you're going to be learning in one of our videos related to heat transfer, what is the equation, how it's developed, what are the factors that affect the heat transfer, specific heat capacity is one of them. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for the latest videos in which we'll be covering another concept related to the physics course of studies that you're having.